O levels only stuff that like you had oxidation states, and I told you that uh, the number of electrons gained and lost uh, they have to be equal in a chemical reaction, right? It's uh, the electrons gained and lost in a redox equation. You have to balance it. Okay, we did uh, several equations uh, which were redox. Okay, for example, if you have Na losing one electron and Al on the other hand gaining three electrons, then Na, NA has to be multiplied by three because you have to make the electrons gain and lost equal. Acha, so this was all about uh, AS division. Acha, and that's all that you have done in electrochemistry so far. This kind of there's a uh, Nothing so far, uh, which is new. Now the only difference now is going to be K. Uh, we have these reactions, right? So the difference we're gonna up. Okay, now we're gonna start A two chemistry. So I'm I'm gonna write a reaction. Okay, let's say, and I'm gonna try and balance it, and I'm gonna explain to you why. What you're going to study in A2 electrochemistry? Okay, now the whole topic is in A2 electrochemistry. One second. Okay, so A2 electrochemistry. So I'm, I'm going to put a I'm going to put two elements in front of you. There's Na and there's Cl2, right? These two elements. And uh, I said now what what is going to happen is that the equation is not given to you. Okay, up to the point of all AS everywhere the equation was already was already and always given to you. Okay, so I've 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 written down two elements, Na and Cl2. Can somebody tell me what is the redox reaction that's going to happen? What's going to happen to Na? What's going to happen to Cl2? If I put them together, what will happen? Will Na gain electrons, lose electrons? What will happen? We will start lose. Okay, so it's going to lose electrons. Right? It's going to form Na plus one. And what will happen to Cl? Cl is obviously going to gain electrons, right? So we have made a redox reaction. Yeah, it's got double color two in it. We see it. You can balance it. Uh, remember, electrons gain and loss they have to be equal. Acha, so this was very easy. You, you you were able to make a redox reaction, ठीक है? But this reaction, the only reason you were able to make this reaction was that you've studied this reaction. Uh, I mean, this this is probably the first equation you learned to write. Okay, Na reacts with Cl2. Na loses electrons. It's a metal. Cl2 gains electrons. Uh, but what if you had some other substance? Let's say you had N2 plus, and you had lead 2 plus. And I tell you now, tell me what's going to happen, right? Who's going to lose electrons? Who's going to gain electrons? Right. So now the issue is that you have no idea, right? No idea who loses electrons and who gains electrons, right? So, so the point is, A two electrochemistry is kind of predicting what will happen. Okay, right now at the moment we have no idea what's going to happen. Okay, what will happen to tin two plus? Will it turn into tin four plus? Will it turn into tin? Okay, what's going to happen? Will it get reduced? Will it get oxidized? No idea at the moment. Okay, the upper valley maybe we had some idea, right? We are we exactly knew what's going to happen, but not in this one. So the point is, okay, uh, in A two electrochemistry you learn how to predict whether a substance is going to lose electrons, and you're going to predict who's going to gain electrons. Okay, we're going to build a system. Now, if I put two elements together, so if I tell you, okay, there's Fe three plus, sorry, there's Fe two plus, and there's MnO four minus one, 
ठीक है सो एट द एंड एंड ऑफ दिस चैप्टर यू विल एग्जैक्टली लर्न के बी व्हाट विल हैपन इन दिस रिएक्शन यू विल मेक द इक्वेशन योरसेल्फ ठीक है यू डोंट नीड एनी हेल्प फ्रॉम आउटसाइड लाइक इन दिस रिएक्शन uh once you're done with the chapter you'll know okay p fe2 plus loses one electron turns to fe3 plus mn on the other hand turns to becomes uh, reduced to mn2 plus and there's water molecules that are produced right and there's uh five of these uh eight of these and four of h2 so the whole equation and it, and the whole balancing thing you will be able to do it yourself as so the first question is अब इसको आंसर करते हैं हु गेन्स एंड हु लूजेस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स हाउ कैन वी नो व्हाट अ सब्सटेंस वुड वांट टू डू राइट सो लेट्स पिक सोडियम लेट्स पिक समथिंग दैट इज फेमिलियर अ लेट्स पिक सोडियम बट इफ द व्हाट इज सोडियम लाइक टू डू डज इट लाइक टू लूज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स और डज इट अब्दुल on it mike i said does it like to lose electron does it like to gain electrons so you get this one uh it likes to lose electrons we know it's one of the most reactive elements theek okay? hai so we know so sodium ka hame pata hai we know it's what it's going to do so we know it's it really likes to lose electrons right so there's a high tendency for it to lose electrons so my next uh, question is that uh, can we give it a value uh, like let's let's say we we know it likes to lose electrons but how can we quantify it how can we give it a certain value okay, if i if i want to compare it with potassium let's say so i've got potassium over here I'm going to talk. Okay, let's say the question is: Does potassium like to lose electrons more compared to sodium, or does it like? Uh, because potassium is also a group one metal. Potassium would also like to. It's a very reactive group one metal. It would also form uh, plus one ions. So the question is: Does it even have an even higher tendency to lose electrons? Okay, it's more because it's more reactive, right? It's down the group. But you've got all sorts of elements. Okay, so there's going to be confusion. Who, who likes to lose electrons who likes to gain electrons so how can we quantify it how can we give it a certain value so for that uh this tendency to lose electrons and gain electrons you quantify it by by measuring electrode potentials by by making standard electrodes okay so we make a system and we start constructing standard electrodes what standard electrodes is that uh for this reaction for example the sodium one and the first type of electrode is a is a uh metal uh metal in usually in equilibrium with aqueous solids Okay, so if you have a metal in equilibrium with, it's aqueous solids. That's the first type of electrode. Okay, so we remember we know sodium likes to lose electrons. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a sodium electrode. Let's say there's a piece of sodium. As I remember, and remember this is a this is a very uh, simplistic diagram. Reality may it's a slightly more complicated, but this one is a simplistic version which is sufficient. for now what i'm going to take is i'm going to take a piece of sodium so here's a bar of sodium and i'm going to place it in a solution that contains sodium ions like an nacl solution and i'm going to wait what happens now in this case i already know what's going to happen i know that what will sodium do sodium is reactive and ab is listen to this carefully sodium is reactive so sodium starts to lose electrons 
So it starts losing electrons. And a lot of sodium ions are going to be produced. So immediately what will happen is the, the sodium metallic rod will start to dissolve. It will start producing a lot of sodium ions. Okay, because we know it's a very reactive metal. So lots and lots of sodium ions are being produced. You clear this first step, is this clear? I mean, this is what sodium is going to be, going to do, right? Is that clear? Alicia, clear? Naseeb, Omar, is this clear? Yes. I said, then the next part. I said, can somebody tell you, will this go endlessly? Like, when will this reaction stop? Like, will sodium continue to dissolve? And every time sodium loses electrons, right? So all those electrons, they, they're left behind. You can remember it's a metallic rod. So every time the sodium atom loses electrons, it turns into sodium ions. electron in outer shell, one of the electrons in the valence shell is lost. And the metallic rod is capable of, uh, like, uh, metallic rod has delocalized electrons. So it will have more and more delocalized electrons because the sodium is continuously losing electrons, right? I said, mean, so when will this reaction stop? Or will this continue to happen endlessly? Will all the sodium dissolve? Or will it stop before that? Anyone have any idea, Alicia? See, over. See, Alicia, that, that, I mean, that's that's also true. Like, the sodium ions can't dissolve endlessly, right? There's a limit to the amount of sodium ions in the solution. You can't have that many sodium ions. So one thing is, okay, the solution might get saturated, that uh, there would be too many sodium ions, that more sodium ions will not be able to dissolve into the solution. But there's another thing happening. Okay, every time sodium loses an electron, what happens to the rod? It becomes more and more. It becomes more negatively charged. So there's a negative potential that's building up. Okay, every time sodium loses electrons, the electrons, they accumulate on the metallic rod and the negative charge builds up. What's happening to the solution? The solution is becoming more and more positively charged. So there's going to be a limit to this negative charge. There's going to be a there's going to be a point. A point will reach where the negative charge would become very large, right? Okay, every time sodium loses electrons, more electrons accumulate on the metallic rod. So a point will come when the negative charge would become very large, and when it becomes very large, what will happen at that point is that the ions will start getting attracted back to the negative charge. So initially, the ions were getting formed. But every time an ion was formed, the negative charge, it continued to build up on the metallic rod. Eventually, it reached a point where the negative charge is so large that it will start attracting the positive ions back. So that is the point where a reversible reaction will get established. Okay, although sodium will continue to dissolve, but the negative charge would be so large that the sodium ions a reversible reaction. The sodium ions will get attracted to the electrons back again. Okay, and a reversible reaction will build up. And it is at this point that no further sodium ions will dissolve, although they are dissolving continuously. But at the same time, they're getting attracted to the metallic rod back again. So the net quantity of sodium ions will remain unchanged. Is this clear? Sanu, clear? Yes or no? And, the, and there's no, there's not going to be any further buildup of charge as well. Every time an electron is lost, right, uh, the reversible reaction happens and sodium ions gains the electron back. So, so the net quantity of negative charge would also become, would become constant. Once it's reversible, Okay, whenever something is reversible in equilibrium, uh, so the amount of sodium ions and the amount of electrons that are being produced, that will become constant. Okay, it's not going to change. 
every time someone loses an electron someone else will gain the electron back again so i so said what do you do at this point you're going to take a voltmeter take a voltmeter pakro and uh, attach that voltmeter to ground or earth or any reference point we'll talk about the reference point later on as so you attach it there and you measure the voltage and the potential that's built up would be a negative potential in this case it's minus 2.71 volt uh that's known as the standard electrode potential so it's the potential that is built up on the electrode and this potential i said ye bas ke is ab is this clear that there was a lot of electrons accumulating on this right is that clear so a lot of negative charge got built up and then the re reaction became reversible because the negative charge it came a point where the negative charge was so large that the sodium ions they got attracted back again and the reaction became reversible right it 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 reached an equilibrium to abhi ho raha hai ki you got a negative potential on this right if you know voltage if you if you've done physics all you have to do is attach a voltmeter and measure the voltage right you know it's a negative voltage that's built up there's a lot of electrons on it so uh you measure the potential it's going to give you a negative voltage because of the extra electrons over here this voltage is your standard electrode potential it's the potential of that's built up it's the, it, it basically measures how many electrons are built, are accumulating on the on the electrode okay so you you got a very negative potential and the reason you got a very negative potential was sodium really liked to lose electrons there was a lot of electrons that were accumulating on the metallic rod because sodium lost so many electrons baat samajh aayi hai ki there's a potential that's built up on this metallic rod is that clear and this potential gives us some idea of what sodium likes to do if it's a negative potential then that negative potential indicates that whatever this substance was it really liked losing electrons that it lost so many electrons that there was a lot of negative charge on this metallic rod so that potential helps us figure out what the substance likes to do okay so i'm going to write this over here that a negative potential indicates that if sodium did not like to lose electrons then there would not be a lot of electrons on this metallic rod and the negative charge over here will not be very large okay so a negative potential indicates that sodium likes to lose electrons is all clear over abdullah and see Acha, and that's the key point. Remember, this is the key point. The whole chapter is this: negative potential. Remember this: negative potential. That means the substance really likes to lose electrons. And in a, in a similar way, uh, if I open the data booklet, where is the data booklet? Acha, all these potentials are quoted in the data booklet for almost all metals. ठीक है Oh, let me just open this. Okay, so if you, I said, will can somebody answer? Will potassium be more negative compared to sodium, or less negative? If if you if I replaced. this with a with a potassium electrode will potassium produce even more electrons will there be even more negative charge on this metallic rod or not i 
this is a potassium uh, will be more negative, right? Abhi clear, Sheep, Anisha. Okay, so opening the data booklet now. Uh, there's a page. Let's remember all this data will be printed now with the question. You won't have a separate data booklet, okay? But all of this data is still valid. It's going to be with the question. As you can see over here, uh, if you find sodium, where did I get the minus 2.71 voltage? I got it from here. Okay, sodium ions in equilibrium with sodium. It's got a potential of minus 2.71. That means negative means that the sodium really likes to lose electrons. So we can find out potassium as well. Potassium would be even more negative. Uh, this is potassium. Okay, so over here. Uh, this one is potassium, potassium with potassium ions. That's minus 2.92 volts. That's that's even more negative. Uh, potassium in niche corner. That's rubidium. I don't think rubidium is over here, but uh, nee. no, they don't have rubidium. They just add sodium and potassium. So uh, as I'm moving on, let's do an example of someone who likes to gain electrons. Okay, let's, I said, this is, remember the first type of electrode, it's a metal uh, with aqueous metal ions. Okay, we'll discuss this later. The second type of electrode, let's, uh, that's gas with aqueous ions. So there's a gas and that gas is in equilibrium with its aqueous ions. So this one. And let's take the example of uh, someone who likes to gain electrons. Let's talk about uh, Cl2. Okay, I guess everyone agrees that Cl2 really likes to, really likes to gain electrons, right? Both are clear, and Cl2 likes to gain electrons. Is that clear? Yes. So, so we know we know that Cl2 really likes to gain electrons. Okay, so we're pretty sure that Cl2, well, Cl minus one doesn't like to form Cl2, but uh, because if Cl minus one wanted to form Cl2, so our table salt will spontaneously turn into chlorine gas. It doesn't. Cl minus one is very stable. Cl2 turns into Cl minus one. The other way, it's harder to do. I mean, you need to do electrolysis to, to reverse this. Because a lot of energy is required for that. So the reverse is not going to happen. It's Cl2 that's gaining electrons, right? I said, what type of electrode will you make? Now you've got a gas on your hands. So we've got we've got a gas, and this is our aqueous ions, right? So since we have a gas, we would need a gas. I need to make an electrode now. And the first thing is. Where do, where do I put the gas? It's uh, it's going to be put in a in a gas jar. So that's where my Cl2 gas is coming from. Uh, where do I put the Cl ions? The Cl ions have to be I said, where do I put the Cl ions? The Cl ions are going to be in the solution. So there's this solution and the solution has Cl ions, because we got Cl ions in the solution. Now, for an electrode, I need a metallic substance. I need, uh, because if Cl2 likes to gain electrons, where would it gain electrons? Like, who's, who, who is it going to take electrons from? So for that, I'm going to place a platinum electrode inside the gas jar. So we've got so we've got a platinum electrode. So we've got a platinum electrode. Remember, it's a metal. Metal have delocalized electrons, right? I mean, a metal. Remember, a metal is a good electrode. Why is it a good electrode? 
because uh, this is what a metal looks like. Uh, so the structure, whether you already know this, what, what is the metallic structure? It's, uh, it's, it's positive metal ions in a sea of, you know, okay. so it's, a, it's a positive metal ions in a sea of free moving electrons, right? So if somebody wants electrons, it can gain electrons from the metal. If somebody wants to lose electrons, it can add its electrons to the delocalized electrons, right? So, so metal ki khas baat hai ke the charge can build up on a metal. It can also, uh, you can remove charge from the metal. You can add more electrons to this delocalized electrons and you can, you can remove electrons. So platinum, that's why it's good. So Cl2 comes in. Okay, so imagine tiny Cl2 molecules coming in. What will they do? They'll, they'll see electrons in the metallic rod, right? And they'll gain those electrons, right? So more and more Cl2 molecules are going to come in and they're going to start, I said, they're going to start gaining electrons from the metallic rod. So what charge will build up on the metallic rod over here? Oh, guys, it's going to be positive or negative? Positive, right? So, because the electrons are being taken up by Cl2, Cl2 is constantly gaining electrons. So, so the metallic rod will become electron deficient. It's going to be there's going to be positive charge that will be building up on the metallic rod. So more and more positive charge continues to build up. The Cl2 will continue to gain electrons from the metallic rod. And what will happen to the Cl2? They'll start turning into Cl ions. So lots of Cl ions are going to be produced. So in this solution, the quantity of Cl ions will continue to increase. But will this happen indefinitely? Uh, so your metallic rod and it's becoming more and more positively charged, right? as Cl2 continues to remove electrons from it. But up to a point, at a certain point, the positive charge would become very large. There's going to be a very large positive. So at a certain point, there's going to be a very large positive charge. And if there's a very large positive charge, what will happen? The metal will want its electrons back. Okay, well, positive charge will become so big that it will take the Cl minus one and start pulling electrons back from it. Okay, because the rod is so electron deficient. So there will come a point where the reverse reaction will also start to happen. Okay, up till a point, Cl2 will continue to gain electrons. Every time a Cl2 molecule comes in, electrons are gained from the platinum electrode and the platinum electrode will become more and more positively charged. But up till a point where the positive charge would become so big that it sees a negative ion, it will attract the negative ion and pull electrons back from it. So that's when a reversible reaction or an equilibrium is established. Okay? Yeah, the clear is this clear? Right? Chan, see, is this clear? And that's the point where you, what do you do with the, you measure the potential. You take a voltmeter, you connect the voltmeter with the metallic uh, electrode and measure the potential with respect to a reference point. Okay? So the potential over here will come out to be, uh, I think it's 1.36 volts. Okay, so I'm formally defined because I'm just explaining right now, right? So it's going to come out to be 1.36 volts, uh, which is given over here with chlorine. I said this is alphabetically, so Cl is over here. Look at Cl2 in equilibrium with Cl lines. Uh, it's 1.36 volts. It's a positive value. So what does that mean? A positive value indicates that. Uh, I said a positive value indicates that whatever substance you had, it really wanted to gain electrons. Okay, so positive electrode potential So 
that means that the substance really likes to be an electron. So yeah, that is what is meant by a positive potential. So you're going to get negative potentials, you're going to get positive potentials. It's all, it all depends on if the substance really likes to lose electrons, a lot of electrons would accumulate over here and the potential would become negative. So negative ka matlab hai ke, it really likes to lose electrons. Vice versa, if um, substance likes to gain electrons, so if the metallic rod, a lot of the element comes in or whatever the substance is, it comes in and starts to gain electrons and a lot of them, so the electrode will become positively charged. Okay. So you've got negative potentials, you've got positive potentials. Is that clear? So, and that solves our problem. Okay, the whole problem was what do substances like to do? Whether they like to lose electrons, whether they like to gain electrons. This value would indicate what they like to do. This is a 1.82. That's very positive. That means uh, that means cobalt really likes to cobalt C plus really likes to gain electrons. Okay, vice versa, this value is very negative. That means calcium really likes to lose electrons. It likes to form calcium ions, not the other way around. Okay. So, so based on these values, you're able to figure out what do they want to do. And it's going to be relative. Okay, for example, if I compare uh, copper, which is 0.52, uh, and iron, which is minus 0.44. So if you compare 0.52 with, so it's going to be a relative value. Okay, you're given two substances and you're going to compare their values. Who's going to gain electrons, who's going to lose electrons. So it's going to be, the values are going to be considered in relative terms, like compared to what? But a loan, just a loan minus 0.91, that does not mean anything unless you compare it with something. Okay, if I compare it with minus 0.41, then that means ki chromium Juana that really likes to lose electrons compared to this other one, which is chromium 2 plus. So, so isko thoda we'll formally discuss kar lete, but hopefully the basic idea is clear. Ke where do you get uh, electrode potentials? Theke? Is the concept clear? Just the concept. Forget everything else. Positive potential, negative potentials, right? And is that clear to everyone? Abdullah, Seep, Shyan, Umar. Ashen, so now, now I'm going to study this formally, like uh, because there's going to be a lot of drawings involved and there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, specific things involved. Okay? So, I mean, the main concept is just remember that positive means they're going to gain, negative means they're going to lose. And it has to be a relative comparison. It's always in comparison to something. Okay, sodium likes to lose electrons, right? Potassium likes to lose electrons even more. So it's a relative comparison, right? So, so remember it's a Kale value ka matlab kush nahi hai, okay? if it's If it's a standalone value, doesn't mean anything unless you compare it with something. I said, I'll do one last electrode just to finish this uh, first phase. I said, you can build electrodes uh, where you can have aqueous ions, which are in equilibrium with, there's a third type of electrode, okay? and we'll discuss this in, in detail later on as well. As so aqueous ions in equilibrium with other aqueous ions. Okay, so we did a gas electrode, we did a, now this, this third one. I so said these three types of electrodes are sufficient to represent all the equations that are given over here. We'll do practice later on, okay? As an aqua science and equivalent with aqua science. So let's say we're dealing with a reaction where there's Fe3 plus ions and there's Fe2 plus ions. And I want to figure out what will happen. I want to figure this out. Okay, what's going to happen? Does Fe3 plus like to, does it like to gain electrons and form Fe2 plus? Or the other way around. Or is it Fe2 plus that likes to lose electrons and form Fe3 plus, right? So, so let's say I'm confused. I don't know what's going to happen, but both of them are aqua signs. 
if c plus is aqueous and similarly if e2 plus is also aqueous let's say both of them are aqueous right so what type of electrode will i make what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a beaker and i'm going to put both ions in the same beaker so the beaker will have fec plus aqueous and it will have fe2 plus aqueous as well okay so this is the third type of electrode let's say whatever is happening whatever you, uh see my reactivity receives per comment kar to okay whatever is happening uh you've got uh, aqueous ions only right and i want to figure out kya hoga who's going to gain electrons let's say fe3 plus likes to gain electrons where would it gain those electrons from so you need an inert electrode you need a source so what you'll do is you'll add a platinum electrode okay you'll add a platinum electrode so if fec plus likes to gain electrons it will start gaining electrons from the platinum electrode and the platinum electrode would become electron deficient there's going to be a positive charge that's going to build up vice versa maybe if e2 plus likes to lose electrons so where would it lose electrons it's going to give its electrons to the platinum electrode so there's going to be more electrons on the platinum electrode and the platinum electrode would become negatively charged so whatever happens happens on this platinum electrode theek hai and we we're going to wait for the potential to build and once the potential potential has the electrode potential or the voltage has been built up we'll measure the voltage and that voltage will indicate what do they want to do agar to yahan pe if it's very negatively charged then that means fe3 plus really likes to lose electrons vice versa if the voltage over here is very positively charged that means fe2 plus really likes to uh, lose uh, so fe2 plus really likes to lose electrons if it's uh, ulta kya hai if fe3 plus starts to really gain electrons it will be positively charged if fe2 plus likes to lose electrons then the metallic rod would be negatively charged so whatever happens potential that's built up over here will tell you and the data booklet gives this potential as positive 0.77 volts that kind of indicates that fe c plus kind of likes to gain electrons which is why this positive charge that's built up over here so that's your third type of electrode you guys remember uh one second as this one so remember this thing that uh, in every reaction uh, you'll have you'll set up different types of electrodes either the electrode will involve a metal in that case the electrode would look like this the metal would be over here and the ions will be in solution and whatever happens whatever goes on a potential would build up over here right then there'll be equations or reactions where where there's a gas involved if there's a gas involved in that case the gas will be in a gas jar and the ions will be in the solution and you'll put a platinum electrode and you'll wait for whatever happens a potential would build up and the potential will tell you what's going on if it's positive then that means it's uh, it likes to gain electrons if it's negative that means it likes to the substance likes to lose electrons and then there's a third type of electrode maybe the equation only has aqueous ions in that case uh, if it only has aqueous ions so the aqueous ions would be in the solution and the platinum electrode would be dipped into it whatever happens a potential will build up and that will give you an idea of what's going to happen theek hai ye clear hai it's three types of electrodes is that clear we're going to practice this a lot more but is this part clear acha see uske upar question ki reactive disease this is definitely linked to the reactive disease but the thing was the reactive disease was very limited uh the reactive disease would tell you that sodium is more reactive than aluminum theek hai one second
Acha this one, sorry. Acha this, uh, this one is definitely linked to the reactor disease. Okay, what happens in the reactor disease is okay. Uh, in reactor disease, you know that it's K N C M G L. You know that M G is more reactive than A L, but you don't have any value. You don't have T K M G is more reactive than A L, but like exactly how much reactive, right? Plus the reactivity series. Uh, अच्छा अभी प्लस पॉइंट सेवन सेवन मीन्स एट द मोमेंट इट मीन्स नथिंग ठीक है कंपैरिजन में इट मीन्स इफ आई कंपेयर इट विद इफ आई कंपेयर इट विद क्लोरीन द क्लोरीन इज इवन मोर पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव का मैंने क्या बताया था कि टोली दैट पॉजिटिव पोटेंशियल मीन्स दैट द सब्सटेंस रियली लाइक्स टू गेन इलेक्ट्रॉन सो इफ यू कंपेयर दीज टू बिटवीन दीज टू दिस इज वन पॉइंट सिक्स दिस इज पॉइंट सेवन सेवन पॉइंट सेवन सेवन Indicates that it likes to gain electrons, right? But 1.36 means that Cl2 likes to gain electrons even more. Okay. So, अभी detail हम detail में आते हैं, ठीक है? We'll we'll discuss this in a lot more detail. अच्छा, लेकिन coming back to Cl, remember it's it's related to the reactor disease, but the problem with the reactor disease is that it had very limited number of uh, elements. Plus, there was quantitatively no value was given. Like we know, aluminium is reactive, but exactly how reactive? Do we have a value for that? We didn't have a value. We just knew that aluminium, you know, it's at the top of the reactive series. That doesn't mean anything. That just means that aluminium is reactive. Like, but you didn't know like how reactive, right? You didn't have a value for that. Now you've got a value for that. This is exactly. In the reactive series, me, you had limited elements, right? But let's compare it with the reactor disease. You had K, right? K was at the top. K is over here. It's still at the top. It's uh, it's minus two point nine two. That means it really likes to lose electrons. It's it's more negative than pretty much everything apart from lithium. Uh, then you had Na. Na was slightly less reactive, so that's minus two point seven one. Then you had Ca. Ca would be slightly less reactive. Ca is over here. That's uh, minus two point eight seven. Actually. Uh, Ca likes to lose electrons even more compared to Na. Actually, it's minus two point eight seven. But the trend we get, okay, it's uh, this Mg. Okay, Mg would be slightly less. It's uh, minus two point three eight. So, but for the reactor disease, you didn't have uh, a number associated with it, and you didn't have these many substances. So, okay, let's continue tomorrow. Next time, we'll we'll discuss in a lot more detail. Okay, we'll discuss. We'll uh, abhi just a brief intro. Okay, right? just think of it as a very brief intro. But we didn't really cover much. So, okay, everyone. Last is. Hello.